Okay, so today we're going to talk about decimals. And to talk about decimals, we're actually going to start with the most important part, which is place value. Okay? So we've been dealing a lot with whole numbers. Whole numbers happen before the decimal, right? So this is the decimal. The decimal does not count as a place, but it separates. It's the, guard, it's the gatekeeper between our whole numbers and really our fractions, okay? We'll talk about why I'm calling those fractions in a moment. So what are the whole number place values? The first one right before the decimal, if you have $5, it would go here, right? What's this place value called? The ones, good. After ones is tens. After tens is hundreds. Yes, that's okay. After hundreds is thousands. After thousands is ten thousands. After ten thousands is hundred thousands. After hundred thousands is millions. How many people want to be a millionaire? We got to know our place value. Okay. So does that is that where it ends? Is that the biggest number ever? Is a million? No, I just stopped there because I ran out of space. So after after millions will be ten millions, then hundred millions, then billions, then. 10 billions, 100 billions, then trillions. After trillions, 10 trillions, 100 trillions, just for fun, quadrillions. Okay, and they keep going, right? Numbers get bigger and bigger and bigger. So now let's look at our fractions. By fractions, I'm talking about decimals, but decimals are always parts of wholes. They're not whole numbers. They're just fractions of fractions of wholes, aren't they? Okay, the first place value after the decimal is called the tenths. And that's actually because that's one divided by ten. You know dimes, right? Dimes go here. How many dimes do you need to make a dollar? Ten of them. So a dime is one-tenth of a dollar, isn't it? It's a dollar divided by ten, into ten pieces. Okay, after tenths is hundredths, and we're making an emphasis on the TH because here you have one divided by a hundred, right? One-hundredth of a dollar. What's one-hundredth of a dollar? A penny. A penny. Okay, so this one is 0 0.1, this is 0 0.01, would be pennies go there, okay? Then, after that, we have hundredths, tenths, hundredths, then thousandths, ten thousandths, okay, hundred thousandths. So again, this is one divided by a thousand, one divided by ten thousand. Oh my gosh, that becomes so hard to write all those zeros. Now I'm going to do something a little bit, I'm going to talk about something a little bit advanced, but I think you guys can handle it and it will help you for your later classes in math. So 10 is 10 to the first power. We're going to talk about just a, an exponents for a second. Hundred hundreds is actually the same thing as 10 times 10 because as we go up in value, in place value, we're actually multiplying 100 is 10 tens, isn't it? Another way of writing that is 10 to the second power. A thousand is a hundred, is a hundred tens or 10 hundreds. It's 10 to the third power. And notice that that's the same thing as 1 followed by three zeros. So that becomes really help, helpful that the exponent matches the number of zeros that I have here. 
10 to the fourth power is a 1 followed by how many zeros? 4. 10 to the fifth power is going to be a 1 followed by 5 zeros. A million 10 to the sixth power, 10 to the sixth power is a 1 followed by how many zeros? 6. So if I say I have five million dollars, five times ten to the six, how much money do I have? I really don't, but <laughs> just so you know. That would be five followed by how many zeros? Six zeros, okay? Now at the billion mark, we have a comma as well, and that would be ten to the ninth power, a trillion, ten to the... 12th power, a quadrillion 10 to the 15th power. What about 1? If you see a pattern, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 10 to the 0. You're right, 10 to the 0 power. That's something you'll learn in your advanced math classes too. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Look at this. It's not it's not, and we'll prove it when we get to mass 65, okay? But anything to the zero power, for now, let's just decide that it's one. We'll get into more rules, mass 65. Okay, here, these are going to actually have negative exponents. 10 to the negative 1, 10 to the negative 2, 10 to the negative 3, but we'll get there. That'll also come up in math 65. So that's our place value system. Now let's talk a little bit. I'm going to change the page since I've run out of room. Okay, and let's talk about how do we make numbers, decimal numbers, into fractions, okay? So let's make up a decimal, 0 0.5. How do I make that into a fraction? This is going to be decimals to fractions. Anyone know? Well, we're going to use the idea of the place value because the way we read this is you guys say 0.5, but if we read it with place value, uh, yes it is, but if we read it with place value, we say it's 5, and we use the place value tenths, 5 tenths. So that actually means 5 over 10. 5 over 10, can we reduce that fraction? What does that reduce down to? What number goes into 5? Oh. What number goes into 5 and 10 evenly? 5, right? And 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 10. 5 goes into 10 two times. So that's why 0.5 or 5 tenths is the same thing as 1 half. What about this one? How would you read this? using place value, using the idea of the last digit, wherever it lands in our place value chart, that's how we read it. So 75, where's the 5 land? In the hundredths. So we read this 75 hundredths, which is, becomes 75 over 100. Does everybody see why that's the same? How do we? Yeah, if you think about it as money, you have 75 pennies would mean 75 cents, right? 75 hundredths. Now, what about reducing this? Could we reduce it? How many? Four. So, so a quarter, you're, you're using quarters, and that's a great analogy here. So 25 divides into evenly, into both, right? How many times does 25 go into 75? How many times does 25 go into 100? Four, right? So 70, 0.75 is the same thing as 3 fourths. Okay, let's try another one. 0 0.111. How am I going to make that into a fraction? It's what 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 does it land in? So this is 100 
111, and that place value is? Thousandths, yes, thousandths, thousandths. And so to make that into a fraction, we're going to put 111 over 1,000. And then we could think about, can we reduce that? But 111, I'm not sure that we can. Actually, I can check it on my calculator too. 111 divided by 1,000 equals, oh, look, it's equal to that same decimal. You see how I did that? Now, on this calculator, you can go second, F to D, fraction to decimal, and that's going to change it back into a reduced fraction. So I can see that it doesn't reduce. Okay, so that's how we make a decimal into a fraction. We always consider the place value. What if I, a lot of times I have whole numbers. What if I have 5.03? That would be the same thing. I could make, could I make that into a fraction? I could also make it into a mixed number, okay? A mixed number, can anyone tell me what the mixed number would be? Five and three. Why hundreds? Why hundreds? Does everybody know why I put a hundred as a denominator? That's the position. Five, we, we could read this five and three hundredths. Five and three hundredths. Okay, what if I wanted to change fractions into decimals? That's another thing that we have to do. Changing fractions back into decimals. Well, a fraction is just a division problem. There's actually two ways I could do it. Okay, um, let's use the fraction one-fourth. Okay, so with one-fourth, if I could make it equal to either 10 or 100 or 1,000, does 4 go into 10? No. Does 4 go into 100? Okay, how many times does 4 go into 100? How, what, what times 4 can give me 100? Because you think about quarters, right? Okay, I'm doing the easy ones for you guys. So you notice, what, why is this helpful, you guys, to make the denominator 100? How does that help me make it into a decimal? Why 100? Why, why do I want the denominator to be 100? What decimal would this be equivalent to? Right? Because of the four quarters thing, exactly. And because, let's look back on this page. If I make it, you guys, if I make it equal to either 10, 100, 1,000, then I can know what the place value is. So that's what I, that was my first strategy, is to try and make an equivalent fraction where the denominator was 100, since that way I would know the place value, right? 25 hundredths. But not all numbers divide evenly into 100. For instance, 1 third. 3 does not go into 10. 3 does not divide evenly into 100, right? So another way of doing this, making this into a decimal, is to do long division. 3 divided into 1 point, how many zeros exist past the decimal? Yeah, an infinite amount. So we can just keep having zeros all we want. Now we go, how many times does 3 go into 1? Yeah, I put a zero here um, preemptively, but that's why I was trying to get you guys to say zero. So three does not go into one, right? Three goes into zero, or three goes into one zero times. So that's why I put the zero. I'm putting the decimal after my number one, because 1. 1.0000, right? Then how many times does three go into just 10? Three goes into 10, three times, good. Three times three is nine. We bring a 1, bring the 0 down. How many times does 3 go into 10? Three more times. Okay, 3 times 3 is 9 minus 1. Okay, bring another 0 down. Do you? Oh, so it's a repeating decimal. So here, when this decimal ends, we call this a terminating decimal. Here, 
0 0.3 repeating, we use the bar, the bar notation means, notate, nope, notation, means that we have a repeating decimal. So you have fractions will always give you either terminating, meaning they end, or repeating terminating or repeating decimals, okay? And some of the most popular ones, I'm going to give you guys this as well, this sheet. Some, these are some of the most popular that a lot of people know already. So I was just showing you how to get these, but one half is equal to 0.5. We just did this one. One third is 0.3 repeating. They could put a bar. This is better if you put a bar over it, okay? And then two-thirds. So some of these ones you know already, right? You have memorized. Just like knowing your times tables, knowing, and we're going to later on get to percent, but knowing certain fractions that are most commonly used and their decimal equivalent can be really helpful, you know? So I'll give you guys that. Let's pause the video. We're going to stop right now, and then we'll do